Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to play a scrimmage game with not a lot of players. Doing this at the end of a really good practice is a great way to reward your players. By having a scrimmage game, your players will be able to apply what they learned and put into game-like action. Your players will have a lot of fun, can get competitive, and show you as a coach how your players are developing and progressing along. Optional equipment is a pitching net. So this is how you play the two base scrimmage game. So as you know, in order to play a game, you're going to need 18 players, so nine players on each side. And most teams, um, when you think about softball teams, you have an average in between 11, 12, maybe 14 players at most, right? So it's very hard to play an actual game within your own team, a scrimmage game, uh, with not enough players. So this is how you actually set up. So you're going to be setting up based on two players per team. So you're going to have several two-player teams. If you have an even number of players at practice that day, then it works out. If you have an odd number, then... You know, then you'll have three players on one team. So for this example, let's go with we have nine players who showed up to practice. We had a really good practice. We want to reward our players with a scrimmage game, uh, let them have fun, and apply what they learn at practice. So let's set this up. So you're going to have always the one of the coaches is going to be the pitcher, and all they're going to be doing is soft toss. You want them to hit the ball and you want them to put in play to work on defense, and you want to hit the ball in certain places, and you'll see what I mean. And then you're going to have another coach, okay, that's going to be the catcher. So, again, because it's soft toss, and you want the, the, the players, depending on the age group and how hard they hit, you know, it's just safety, right? So that's why it's optional. Uh, I, I said you can have a pitching net. So if you have a pitching net, I see a lot of times, again, I'm doing it, a lot of line drives, you know, we tell players to hit it hard up the middle. You know, they come up right. So you want to make sure you have that pitching net just to protect yourself as well, okay? Um, and another rule that I want to sort of just put out there is because we don't want any injuries, uh, no sliding, and there's a coach that's going to be at home, uh, there is no sliding at home when they come home to score runs, okay? Uh, just like in slow pitch, you have your actual line that when someone passes, if they score, so let's use some weight chalk here. Uh, so if they pass this line, there's a commitment line. If they pass that line, then it scores, right? So all they got to do is run pass. If the coach is on home before they actually get there, then they're out. If they pass it before they catch it, um, then it scores a run, right? So uh, some of the rules. So now we're going to set up our players. So I'm going to do with different colors here. So you're going to have, okay, so we have, that's one team. This is another team. So I said we have nine players of practice, right? Different color, right? And then now, because it's an odd number, you have, so you have your nine players, right? Okay, so now this is where it gets interesting. So we're going to set up a defense, okay? So we're going to set up. Um, we'll start with orange. So the orange team, so the, you have one player here, you have a player here, and then you have this team, the green, so you'll have shortstop, right? And then you'll have third baseman, and then you will have your outfielders, right fielder, center fielder, and your left fielder. Okay, so how does this work now? So again, two base scrimmage. So you're only using... Well, you're using all the bases, but there's two bases where they're actually playing it. So you're going to have one of the players on the red team after bat, and then you're going to have the other person starting on second. So here's how the rules work. Okay, so that person up to bat, first of all, they're going to start every team when they go up has this count. Okay, so they're going to have one. One strike, and they're going to have one out to start. OK, 
okay? So there's one strike on them and one out. So this helps speed up the game, okay? And helps them as a player to adjust their at-bats and how they want to adjust to make sure, hey, I have one out already. There's a runner in scoring position. I have one strike. How am I going to approach this at-bat? Okay, that helps them mentally prepare for this at-bat and where they're going to hit this ball. So this is how it works. So the pitcher's going to, uh, sorry, the, the coach is going to pitch the ball. And so say, for example, it just hit the short. Okay, so it's hit the short, shortstop fields it, okay, throws it to one. That person who's actually on two actually just stops at three. They didn't score because that was, and so now there's two outs, okay? So what's going to happen now, this person, that person who was here, okay, is now going to switch. So the person who started second now gets to go up to bat, and the person um, who was up to bat now starts at second. So say this at bat, this, okay, so let's, let's erase this. So now the coach is going to pitch again. So there's two outs now, okay? We have two outs, pitches it, drives the ball into right center, okay? So now this person is able to make it home, okay? So red team now has one run, okay? And so this person here, Again, it's up to you. You can stop at one if you know they're going to get it in. You don't need to stretch it because what's going to happen, they're going to switch again. And as long as that batter drives in that run, they get a point. So you have to approach your at-bat, right? How am I going to drive this ball with that runner, my teammate on second, to score that run who's in um, scoring position? So every at-bat is important. You have one strike. You have one out. Okay, when you start your team, and you have to drive that runner. It's not just a single because they can't make it to three, right? Even if the team blue has it, you're always going to be, and you have three players, one person's going to start on two, and one person's up to bat, and that third person is waiting, okay? That person's waiting either to go on up to bat or going to go on base, however you want to figure that out. But you have to make sure you hit the ball, and it's very hard. Like, if you think about it, right? You need to make sure you are strategizing, you're working as a team to put that ball in play so that runner on second will actually score every time you go up to bat, okay? So what happens when you get three outs? When you get three outs, that's it, you switch. So now the red team, so for example, say orange now goes up to bat. So let's delete this, okay? So now the orange team goes up to bat. So you have one person go up to bat, another going to second, and then you have team red now going in the field. And you can change positions, so they don't have to take over that spot. You can bring those people from the off field in, and vice versa, you can change people second, short. No, have them moving around playing different positions, right? Don't have them playing the same thing over and over. But, again, it's just a matter of having everyone, a person in a defensive position, and then there's people up to bat. Okay, so, you know, say, for example, Orange Team now, you know, they're able to score, right? So this person drives the ball. You'll see now, uh, you know what I'm saying, so this person drives out here. Orange scores a run. Right, so they score a run. Now they got orange. They got one run, and then they switch again. That person goes up to second. The person who was running now goes up to plate. They get another hit. They get another run. Right, so now they have two. They have two points. Right, so um, right. So now they got two points. So again, really, it's a fun way to have a game when you don't have enough players. It's strategizing, and it's a it's an interesting way to actually play a game and get your players involved, applying what they learn. It gets really competitive, right? Um, so you'll see, and you go through it. So now the green team goes up after you get the three outs. Then you actually have the blue team who has three players. Um, they'll go up to bat, right? And so, you know, it has to, it, they have to think about it. They need to adjust how they approach their at-bats and, and works on defense, right? So um, an example is situational play. Say, for example, there's only, there's the one out, <clears throat> And, you know, like, say you've gone a couple of evenings, you've gone through all the lineup, but they're all tied, okay? And it's the Blues team's up to bat, <clears throat> and they just need to score one run to win because they say it's tied, like, 4-4 four, four for all the teams, okay? And so they have one out. And so the runner who's on second base, right, now the defense needs to adjust. We need to make sure that we get that, you know, that runner out at home. 
So you're doing everything you can to make sure that that ball, if it ever gets in the outfield, is going to make it home so they don't score that run. Uh, and same situation. If there's two outs, you don't need to get it home. All you need to do is throw it to first base to get that third out, right? So situational plays, learning how to adjust, learning how all the different plays happen. So, again, this is a great way to end your practice, to have a lot of fun, let the players be rewarded for their hard work, and as a coach, you get to see also how the things that you've been teaching them with your drills and practices, they're applying it um, and putting into action. So enjoy this drill. It's a fun drill. It's a great way to end practices and have a lot of fun and let your players enjoy themselves. Thanks for watching Easy Softball Drills for your practice plan. Make sure to check out our other videos and subscribe to our channel.